Hey, what's up guys? Tyler here with Secure Team. For the past couple of years, I, along with the help of many of you, have been able to share to the public through this channel an array of strange happenings, many of which occur on a daily basis and in every part of the world. From UFO sightings and government cover-ups, to the question of our ancient history, our place in the universe, and the variety of incidents, reports, and strange happenings that have left us grasping for an explanation to the unexplainable. Now lately, we've been talking about Antarctica in our last couple of videos. A lot of strange stuff happening down there. And really, the North and South Poles in general have always been topics of mystery throughout the years. And it got me thinking that what if there were certain points on this planet, certain locations, if you will, that are all connected in some way, where in which strange occurrences have been known to happen? And what if we're simply not looking at the bigger picture? And it turns out that a pattern does exist on this planet where in which strange occurrences have happened and were brought to light in 1972 by a man named Ivan T. Anderson, who was a writer and biologist that actually wrote a piece about this for Saga magazine entitled The Twelve Devil's Graveyards. Another name for these 12 locations you may have heard of are the Twelve Vortices. Surely many of you know about one of the most famous of them, that being the Bermuda Triangle. But the Bermuda Triangle is but one set within a group of 12 enigmatic places known to be sites of unexplained disappearances and other mysterious phenomena. We're talking about locations on the planet that don't seem to follow the same rules of physics as everywhere else. Places where strange energies are and have always been present. You're seeing a map of them here as plotted by Mr. Sanderson in 1972. Now, although not all of these are equally famous, each vile vortex is characterized by magnetic anomalies and abnormal occurrences. It has been said that these sites are believed to be rifts where space-time folds in upon itself and everyday physics no longer applies. Ten of these vortices can be found in tropical climates, five along the Tropic of Cancer and five along the Tropic of Capricorn, with the other two being located at Earth's north and south poles. Of these vile vortices, we have the North and South Poles, the Bermuda Triangle, the Algerian Megalithic Ruins, the Devil Sea, otherwise known as Japan's Bermuda Triangle, Hamakalia, east of Hawaii and believed to have once been a high-energy volcano, Karachi, Pakistan, home to Mohenjo-Daro, we have Easter Island, New Hebrides Trench, Wharton Basin, and the South Atlantic Anomaly. Today, I want to talk about my personal favorite and, in my opinion, two of the most mysterious of these locations. And since you likely already know much about the Bermuda Triangle, I think it'd be prudent to start off with another so-called Bermuda Triangle off China's eastern coast known as the Devil's Sea or the Dragon's Triangle. So the Devil's Sea makes up a triangle between Japan and the islands of Bonin, including a major portion of the Philippine Sea. It is also called the Pacific Bermuda Triangle as it lies exactly opposite to the Bermuda Triangle and is noted for its similar paranormal phenomena. In this location, ships and planes have disappeared mysteriously for years. Many have seen so-called ghost ships in the area, and so the Japanese therefore call it the Sea of the Devil. The unexplainable events happening in this region of the ocean have been spoken about for centuries. The name Dragon originates from the old fables dating back to 1000 BCE, where the Chinese believed that there was a huge dragon in the sea that grabbed these ships and aircrafts in order to satisfy its hunger. There have been thousands of accounts and stories on the disappearance of seagoing vessels and aircraft. Back in the 1200s, Kublai Khan's tried several times to invade Japan by crossing the Devil Sea. In this process, he lost his vessels and nearly 40,000 men in the area of the Triangle. 
In the early 1800s, many have claimed to have seen a mysterious lady sailing in a ship in that area. In 1952, the Japanese government sent out a research vessel, the Kaomaru No. 5, to investigate the mysterious waters. The ship, along with its crew of 31 people, disappeared. The Japanese government then declared from then on out this portion of the ocean to be unsafe for marine voyaging and transporting. Between 1952 and 1954, it is said that five Japanese military vessels were lost, with over 700 people vanishing. The Dragon's Triangle is not plotted officially on any global map, so the exact size and perimeter is unknown. But to this day, many seagoing vessels refuse to go near the area, often taking long detours and hearing tales from older generations of not only disappearances, but that of also strange lights and objects seen leaving and entering the waters. Did you guys know that there's actually a Bermuda Triangle in space? Well, perhaps you've heard of it by its other name, the South Atlantic Anomaly. Located over the Brazilian coast, this portion of space is known as one of the most dangerous areas of radiation ever encountered, avoided completely by satellites, and is known to interfere and completely shut down any electronics or spacecraft that pass through it. The official cause of this is due to a point in space where the Van Allen radiation belts, or rings of charged particles that surround the Earth, come closest to the planet's surface. Astronauts on the space shuttle have complained that laptop computers would sometimes crash when they passed through the anomaly, but there have also been aircraft flying far below the anomaly that have mysteriously vanished or crashed when flying through the area. This was most notably displayed with the disappearance of the Air France Flight 447 back in 2009. This routine passenger airliner, which was making its way from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil to Paris, France, mysteriously vanished and then crashed on June 1, 2009. Although the wreckage of the flight was found around five days after, the investigation into what caused the crash lasted for over two years, with the final report concluding that the aircraft had likely crashed after, quote, temporary inconsistencies between the airspeed measurements, finally causing the aircraft to enter an aerodynamic stall from which it did not recover. However, there were some very strange things that happened to this flight just before it vanished that can't seem to be explained by investigators. The make and model of the aircraft was known as an Airbus 330, which is modern and has a host of onboard backup systems that ensure that if there were to be a failure in any one of them, there would be adequate backups by not one, but two systems. Surprisingly, and in this case, all main systems and backup systems failed simultaneously, after which the plane disappeared from radar, the wreckage of which was unable to be located until nearly five days after. Just before the systems failed, it is also said that the pilots reported a bright flash of light from the cockpit, which has caused many to ask whether the plane momentarily flew into a time slip of some sort and that maybe this radiation belt making up the South Atlantic Anomaly has been dipping much lower into Earth's atmosphere and in turn causing this mysterious phenomena that has downed planes and caused vessels to vanish in the area. So these are only a couple of the so-called 12 vortices located on our planet, which brings us back to Antarctica and for that matter the North Pole as well, both of which have been surrounded in their own mysteries and strange phenomena. One can only ask whether all of these locations are mysteriously connected and whether the strange happenings occurring there are a part of something on a much larger scale. Antarctica itself has its own strange magnetic and gravitational anomalies. Couple that with what seems to be an ancient history that has been slowly coming to light over the past few years and the increased interest in the continent by world leaders, one can only wonder. And so we will continue to connect the dots, and in future I will be posting a video where we will be going through all 12 
of these so-called vile vortices, and maybe then we will be able to put together an answer that Mr. Sanderson put forth all those years ago. Thank you guys for stopping by today. Hit that like and share button on your way out. I'd really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys back here in just a bit. Stay safe, guys.